Right, so I want to tell you a little bit of a story. Um, I've always been a bit obsessed with politics and elections, um, to the point where actually in 2010, I hosted my birthday party with the results night. Um, I've definitely been more gangster in my life, and uh, obviously it wasn't the best uh, birthday present I've ever had. But this particular story starts back in 2011, um, when late one night, after procrastinating a lot on Wikipedia, we've all done it, been up there late at night, I stumbled upon this German article by a, a previous lecturer of mine as an undergraduate, um, Simon Cowell's Prime Minister. Um, and it got me thinking, what would have to happen for this dystopian future to end up as our reality? What would have to go wrong to deliver us into this absolute evil? Okay, so here it is. This is a mostly hypothetical confluence of events that if that happened would lead us there. So it all starts with an interview on Newsnight, where he's asked his range of uh, opinion on different sets of issues, and not before long, uh, his name is trending on Twitter. A lot of tweets saying just how, just how good he is. Um, and this is followed by a press conference where Britain's Got Talent, and this, frighteningly, is genuine television footage. Absolutely terrifying. So before long, this ends up on YouTube, um, where a number of uh, journal uh, journalists tweet, tweet about it as well. And before long, it has well over two and a half, or just under two and a half million hits. That's an awful lot of people looking at it as absolute crap. Um, the sun weighs in on the basis of this, and um, people start asking each other, is this actually a possibility? Could we end up in this, this awful situation? So before long, four Facebook groups end up with a total of two million likes in between them. It's really beginning to take on now. The Sun newspaper prints an article for Simon Cowell's new vision of Britain. Horrifying. Uh, Piers Morgan tweets saying, this is a terrible idea, at which point Alan Sugar, his membership of Sport, said, I'll personally commit a million pounds to make sure that Guardian, for all their sins, publishes a story asking, can Simon Cowell save democracy? Which brings me to my next point. Now, I don't know if anyone in the audience knows how to set up a political party, but it turns out it's actually pretty easy. Um, too easy, in fact, I would argue. So I'm thinking Veritas, the Church of Militant Elvis Presley, the Teddy Bear Alliance, the New Millennium Bean Party, Dungeons, Death and Taxes, all dangerous for British democracy, the Conservative Party, right? Hey! All, all terrifying. So all it takes is a name. So here's one Celebrus, that's Latin for famous. A constitution, well they're pretty damn easy to write. A leader, well we already have that. And £150 for the Electoral Commission filing fees. Certainly not a problem for multi-millionaire Simon Cowell. So with his political party now established in law, he, he thinks what's the next step? Step four. And wait for it. He thinks, you know what? <laughs> It's time to recruit some members. So I thought to get some other people to stand under the mighty Celebrus banner. And there is, of course, a grand tradition of uh, celebrities getting involved in politics. Ronald Reagan, he was famously an actor before he led the free will. Arnold Schwarzenegger was a bodybuilder, then an actor, then he was governor of California, lucky California, before he ended up and was going back to uh, movies there. So it's not very difficult to imagine a number of British celebrities he might also fit the bill, which is exactly what Simon Cowell would be thinking. Now, we all know celebrities are just like us, so even better. So he heads off on a recruitment drive. First up, we have that bastion of Britishness, Stephen Fry, Gray. recently named Britain's most trusted celebrity by Roxy Gaming. He's made people see the world. Cheryl Cole beats, not literally, although we do know that's her MO. Uh, 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 she beats the candidate to be elected to Gateshead. Um, Bono, well he's got to make an appearance somewhere, isn't he? Uh, Katie Price, Bruce Force, hey! ends up standing for Parliament. Which brings me to my next step, which is how to run an effective political campaign. Now, as luck would have it, that falls squarely within the Simon Cowell skill set. Psycho, his very aptly named television production company, <laughs> they're going to be great at producing television adverts. One Direction, they re-record what makes you beautiful to what makes you electable, and they launch uh, a massive uh, election campaign song. <laughs> Celebrity endorsement. Cowell turns the table completely. Um, and this is a whole, a whole host of Joe the Plumber types to, to endorse him, to prove how normal they are. This is actually Joe the Plumber from the uh, McCain uh, Banner election, uh, as a nice tidbit. Um, so with this all in mind, I'm waiting for the next slide. Is it really that sort of difficult to imagine when politics is dominated by things like a microphone incident and leader debates? Is it really hard to imagine that 
come election day, media mogul uh, gets the most votes. When you consider that a recent Ipsos Mori poll put politicians square last in terms of trust, where only one in seven people think politicians are telling the truth, is this really too far from reality? Um, truth is not stranger than fiction, or rather, it's not scary when truth is stranger than fiction, it's scary when fiction becomes reality. Thank you very much.